Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for this video, I'm going to be talking you through my favourite authors of all time. And to be honest, I'm quite shocked that I've not done this video before now, but I'm very excited to talk to you about some of my favourite authors. I feel like I'm going to have to constantly update this video because all the time I'm discovering new authors that I absolutely love. So for this one, I've just included ones that I have read more than one book of because there are so many amazing authors that I've just read one book of that I'm like, I feel like you could be a favourite, but can I put you in this list? I have done two honourable mentions for people that I have only read one book from, but I'm just so certain I'm going to love the rest of their books. Um, but there are so many other ones that I'm sure once I have read some more of their books, they will make it onto this list. So for the time being, I've started off with one, two, three, four, five authors that I just love. I've read quite a few of their books and they are just so good. I love them so much. So where to even start? I'm going to start with Carson McCullers. I have read, well, I've read three of her books, um, one of which is a series of short stories. And I have got this one to read next. Clock Without Hands, which I'm so excited about. Um, but the three that I read are The Heart is the Lonely Hunter, The Member of the Wedding, and The Ballad of the Sad Cafe. And I feel like this is the story that makes her into one of my top favourite authors. This is actually the book that has the short stories in there. The Ballad of the Sad Cafe is the main story in this book, um, which is the longest. And then there are a few other short stories in it. And I am just obsessed with this story. It is so short, but it's just so funny and full of these crazy characters. It's just such a good book. I won't go into all the details of all of the books here, but in all the books that I've read, Carson McCullers sets her stories in the deep south. And I just love this setting. These sort of dusty, sandy, hot places where everyone just seems to lead a slower pace of life. Like in the day, it's too hot to do anything. And I just absolutely love that setting. And in her story, she has these towns full of these vibrant characters. I just love the way that she depicts people in these towns. I think Carson McCullers really introduced me to this Deep South setting. And I've just not read a book from her that I don't absolutely love. I think maybe The Member of the Wedding was my least favourite, but still loved it. Like, I just love the way that she depicts family life, friendships. Again, the people in the town, they are just her strong point, the way she depicts characters. I just think she's an amazing author. And she had such a hard life, like, reading about her life was so upsetting. So it just makes me love her even more as an author. I think she's amazing. So please, please go and read one of her books if you haven't already. And if you have to pick one, Definitely this one. I just loved it so much. And next up is more of a newer author for me. They wrote my absolute favourite book of 2022. And I've just read another book by them recently. And that is Percival Everett. And these are the two books that I read from him. And I just love his writing. From reading these two books, I get the impression that he likes to include sort of a real life figure in his books. In The Trees, it was the real life person Emmett Till. And in Doctor No, it was Martin Luther King. Um, and I just love the way he weaves real life history into his stories. He always has so many satirical elements, which again, I love. They are such wacky stories, especially Doctor No. Doctor No is the wackiest story ever. It's about nothing literally the concept of nothing. The main character is a professor who studies nothing. And I feel like he's such a unique writer, such a funny writer. Um, and I just love his story so much. I think this was my favourite one. Like I said, it was my favourite book of last year. I just loved his sense of humour in his writing. And although he's writing about these really serious topics in history, he finds a way to just make it super digestible and just seems to add that satirical edge to his stories to make them just such an enjoyable read. So yeah, I love Passport Everett and I cannot wait to read more from him. I feel like just from reading these two books, he is going to be a favourite of mine for a very long time. And also I always just love his covers, like how fun are they? 
it really just makes the reading experience for me when I've got a book cover. So next up, I feel like if you watch my videos, this will come as no surprise to you. But next up is John Steinbeck. I'm obsessed with John Steinbeck. I just love all of his books. I read a couple when I was younger, but in more recent years, I have read East of Eden, which just faultless, incredible, five out of five stars, so good. I just love a family saga and he does it just so well, the way he depicts family life and shows how the history sort of filters down from generation to generation. I'm just obsessed with, he always spans so many years, which I just love. I think East of Eden is just a must read if you're like a book lover. Yeah, love that book. And then The Grace of Wrath, I loved. And then Canary Row, don't get me started on Canary Row. Again, if you watch my videos, you will know how obsessed I am with this book. It's so good. And it sort of came out of nowhere from me. I just picked it up on a whim, not really expecting to love it that much. It's just a short book, but it's about this little sort of seaside sort of street slash town with all these characters. There's like a convenience store owner. There's a brothel owner. There's this group of men who sort of struggle to integrate into life. They live in this little run down sort of home together. All the characters are just so lovable in their own individual ways. And I am so excited because I have this book here, um, Sweet Thursday, which is set with the same characters, the same setting as Canary Row. And this is in my TBR to read this month. And I'm so excited to delve back into this world and get to know these characters again. I'm so excited. I just feel like John Steinbeck can do no wrong in my eyes. I'm yet to read a book that I don't absolutely love from him. I'm gonna try and read all of his books because I just absolutely love reading them. So if you have any John Steinbeck recommendations of what I should read next from him, do let me know because I know he's got a vast collection of books. Then next up, we have Maggie O'Farrell. Now, Maggie O'Farrell first came to my attention through this book, Hamnet. And this book was one of the very few books that have made me cry. And for this reason, I knew that Maggie O'Farrell was something special because I don't know what it is, but books don't tend to make me cry. I think only like one or two books have made me cry. And don't get me wrong, I have read some very sad books in my time. So if Maggie O'Farrell can make me cry, then I'm sorry, she has to go on my list of best authors. This book just blew me away. I knew it was so popular at the time. And at the time I didn't buy it for some reason. And then a few months later, I decided to pick it up and I can completely see the hype. I just absolutely loved it. Also for Maggie O'Farrell, I recently read The Marriage Portrait as part of the Women's Prize for Fiction long list, and this actually became number one. I read the full long list and ranked them all, and this one came number one. Sorry, that's a spoiler if you haven't watched my last video where I talk about the long list, um, but I just thought this book was so good. And it's interesting because both of these books feel very different, but I just love them both. I thought they were really unique takes. Like this book is centered around not Shakespeare, his family. Shakespeare is not mentioned in this book by name. And then this book is centered around an actual true story of a Duke's daughter who was murdered and a sort of Maggie O'Farrell's version of what could have happened. And I just love that. I also have read Instructions for a Heatwave by Maggie O'Farrell, which I actually didn't love so much. I thought it was an okay read, but like not an amazing read for me. But I think her other two books, sorry, they just sway it for me. Like she is still such an amazing author and I cannot wait to read more from her. And then finally, my, fa my final favourite author, who I recently saw at Hay Festival, I went and watched one of her talks and I just loved her, was Margaret Atwood. In her talk, she was exactly what I hoped she would be. She was like quite dry and witty, but just so funny. And I just loved hearing her talk. I've read a few books from her. I've only got two with me, but I've also read The Handmaid's Tale and The Heart Goes Last, which I loved both of them. Um, and then I recently just read Oryx and Crake. And I love the way she writes about dystopian worlds. I think that's where she absolutely excels. And a lot of the time that is not really my jam, to be honest, but just the way that she writes about these worlds is so creative, so imaginative that you just feel like you are thrust into that world. You feel so immersed 
This book especially, I just loved. I was obsessed with it. I did a reading vlog about it in one of my recent videos. So go and watch that if you want to hear more about it because I just thought it was amazing. I just think she is such a good dystopian author. She has also written The Blind Assassin, which wasn't a dystopian novel, but this was one of my favorite books of last year. It's about two sisters. The blurb is so vague. It says, 10 days after the war ended, my sister Laura drove a car off a bridge. The bridge was being repaired. She went right through the danger sign. Nothing much was left of her but charred smithereens. So a very different vibe to sort of her dystopian novels, but just equally as good. I think she is just so good at immersing you in a story and immersing you in a world. So I just love Margaret Atwood. And I know that she has so many more books for me to read, which I'm so excited about. Um, and then I have a couple of honourable mentions. And these are authors that I have only read one book from, but I just know, I know I'm going to love them. And I'm going to read some of their books this year. I've actually got one of them to read this month. So my first author is Douglas Stewart. And I don't actually have the book that I have read. I lent it to a friend, but I read Sugar Bane by him. And I've got Young Mungo, which I'm reading next, which I'm so excited about. Again, I met him at Hay Festival and he signed my book. I was so starstruck. He was so nice and kind. And because we're both from Glasgow, he was just so, yeah, just so kind. And I think that's one of the reasons that I do love his writing so much, that he is from Glasgow and my family from Glasgow. His book, Shuggy Bane, is set in Glasgow. So I can really relate to it and I can really picture what he was writing. And I just felt a real affinity with the story. Again, I think this book is also set in Glasgow and I just love how it brings me back to my roots, reminds me of my family. I lived there for a little while as well. So I just have a deep affinity with his writing, I think. But besides that, his writing is just amazing. Shuggy Bane is the most heartbreaking book ever. It was just amazing. The way he describes trauma and poverty is just like nothing else. His books feel very rooted in reality as opposed to maybe like Margaret Atwood who writes about these dystopian worlds. And normally I don't tend to go for books so rooted in reality. I don't know why, I like a bit of like fantasy in my story. But I just love Douglas Stewart's writing so much and I cannot wait to read more from him because I honestly think he's going to be a firm favourite but I will keep you updated once I read Young Mungo this month. Then the final author that I want to give an honourable mention to, because I just loved his book. I have watched a lot of his interviews online because I'm just obsessed with him, even though I've only read one book. And that is Neil Gaiman. After I read his book, American Gods, I feel like American Gods is like his pinnacle book, like his big success. But on my bookcase, I have so many other Neil Gaiman books that I cannot wait to get to. The fact that this book is so long and it's about Norse mythology, I was just so gripped the entire time. I think his writing is amazing. This book is sort of like an American road trip centered around these Norse gods. And I just loved the different landscapes that he described. I think he does it so well. He is such a talented author. And I think I just love him because I have watched so many of his interviews. And I think it's good because he has so many interviews out there. You can just absolutely binge watch them, which I love. So yeah, they are my favorite authors at the minute. Like I said, these may well change or be added to as the months go on because honestly, I'm reading so many amazing books, discovering so many new authors, which I'm so thankful for. So maybe I'll do another one, maybe in a year's time and see how much it's changed. But thank you so much for watching. Please do let me know your favourite authors in the comments because I would love to hear them. I'm always open to discovering new authors and reading new books. So yeah, do leave that in the comments. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.